In today's video I show you the anatomy of some mysterious structure in the shoulder that can confuse many many people and in the end I don't want to make an academic video I just want to make a practical oh sorry about that a practical video and we talk about the biceps pulley anatomy so before I start showing you the biceps pulley on MR images, we first need to understand what it is and what its function is. And you can see here on this illustration, which is a really nice one, that we have the long head of the biceps tendon here in the intraarticular segment and then here in the bicipital groove and then going distally. Now this tendon nearly makes a 90 degrees angle and in order to keep the tendon in this position during all the complex arm movements that you can make, you basically need some kind of a structure that keeps it in place. So, and that is basically what the biceps pulley is for. So we have this structure here, which is comprised by the superior glenohumeral ligament, this one here down below, and this coracohumeral ligament, which is basically the roof of it. And they form like a sling here and prevent that the long head of the biceps tendon is moving medially or subluxation or dislocation in this direction. Also, the subscapularis itself has a little bit of a function in this regard and even this transverse ligament which are some extending fibers of the subscapularis tendon that traverse the bicipital groove. If you are googling for the biceps pulley you will find a lot of different illustrations and very frequently they look something like this where we have these intertwisted ligaments, the superior glenohumeral ligament and the coracohumeral ligament which form this sling and they typically show you how it looks on different slices and how this all works together and sometimes they even show you anatomic pictures uh, cadaver images here like in this book here and even if you read the text and everything it always is so much more complicated than it actually is even here in this radiographics article they show you all these nice uh, figures and illustrations with all these numbers here the number six is the superior glenohumeral ligament. The only good thing about this image is that you can see that it's basically a fold by the joint capsule and we will come back to that later. And here again is this concept that somehow these ligaments are at different sections look different and it's like twisting around and then here forming this sling preventing the long head of the biceps tendon moving medially. This single illustration here is probably the best uh, I have seen so far because it's very simple and it also matches how we look at the MR images in the sagittal view as I will show you soon. So we have the long head of the biceps tendon, we have the supraspinatus tendon and the subscapularis tendon. This is the coracoid process and here in blue this is basically the coracohumeral ligament and here in yellow is the superior glenohumeral ligament and this is basically the sling that prevents the long head of the biceps tendon moving here uh, medially with a subluxation. And also it really nicely illustrates that the long head of the biceps tendon typically is positioned just in the middle between the anterior border of the subscapularis tendon and the upper border of the subscapularis tendon here. So it's nicely in the middle. If it's medially or displaced a little bit downwards, that can be a sign of a pulley lesion. So this is an MR image at probably the same location and you can nicely see we have the subscapularis tendon here we have the supraspinatus tendon and the long head of the biceps tendon and here all this stuff here is probably the coracohumeral ligament and this one here this structure here is the superior glenohumeral ligament forming the sling so basically this is the pulley keeping the tendon in place preventing it from moving in this direction so you can nicely see here this overlay and it might be an oversimplification of things because we don't really uh, go into too much detail what is ligament, what is joint capsule, etc. etc. and all these different subparts of these ligaments. But in the real world you don't really want to do that anyway. So I'm taking a little risk here but there's no point in having an academic discussion if nobody ever uses it during daily reporting. At least that is my opinion here. So while I was looking for nice images I came across this homepage here and it's nice because they have a short historical review about uh, long head of the biceps tendon lesions and it's interesting because they show you this image here and let me make this a little bit bigger and in the legend it's an anonymous wound mannequin from 1517 and 
I like the description, probable mechanism of injury to the biceps before Cowper's description. Now Cowper was or is believed to be the one who made the first case report of a biceps tendon dislocation. Anyways, note the cybertype incision in the opposite shoulder. Yeah, I think he has other problems than a pulley lesion or a long head of the biceps tendon lesion. Here, no shit, Sherlock. So what I do next is show you just a few cases with the anatomy, how it might look like on MRI. This one here is a sagittal T1 weighted sequence after MR orthography. And we are here just at the level of the rotator interval. This is the long head of the biceps tendon. Basically, this is the same image, image that I have shown you just beforehand. Now let's go medially and you can see the coracoid process and the coracohumeral ligament is basically coming from the coracoid process in the direction of the humeral head and then some of these fibers are blending in here with the roof of the pizzipital groove and stuff like that so this is basically the coracohumeral ligament and this fold here so we have the joint capsule this fold here is the superior glenohumeral ligament and initially it's just here if you go laterally it starts coming down and then forming here this sling around the long head of the biceps tendon so basically this sling here is the biceps pulley preventing the long head of the biceps tendon going down you can also nicely see this here on your other this is a t1 weighted sequence with set fat saturation this time and you can also see the pulley here so if you scroll through sometimes you see this sling here it's really hard to see if you don't have a orthography or if you don't have any fluid in the joint, so I wouldn't bother too much. But even if you don't really see it, always make sure that the biceps tendon is more or less in the middle between the subscapularis and the supraspinatus here. However, even this sign is sometimes not so easy because if you go even a little bit more medially, it's not in the middle. If you go a little bit more laterally, it's coming down and it's not really in the middle. I just look at the sagittals here. I look for this sling, if I can see it, it's probably okay. Sometimes it's a little bit thicker, sometimes it's thinner, sometimes it's torn, and we will go through some cases now. So here again, what we what you can do, you go just medially on your sagittal ori oriented sequences, then you scroll through, you start to see this roof here, which is the coracohumeral ligament, and at some point you can imagine here there is probably a sling holding the long head of the biceps tendon in place. The same here on this sequence. You can see the sling here. So this lower part here is the superior glenohumeral ligament and then it's blending in with the coracohumeral ligament. So here another patient, we start medially coracoid process and then this coracohumeral ligament is coming horizontally all over here and then extending here over the long end of the biceps tendon at the level of the bicipital groove and Below it, here, the one structure that is coming down is the superior glenohumeral ligament holding the long head of the biceps tendon here in place. And here in another patient, you can see the long head of the biceps tendon here. And don't mistake this for the superior glenohumeral ligament because it's probably this structure here which is more like a fold and it's really coming down here around the long head of the biceps tendon and it's not clearly visible in this patient. And in about 10% of patients, you don't see it at all because it's absent. This is also a nice example. We are here medially. We have here the coracoid process. The coracohumeral ligament is just here, just this structure here. And then here is the superior glenohumeral ligament forming the sling. And it's nicely outlined here, holding the tendon in place, not coming down. Um, don't drive yourself crazy if you have to assess the biceps pulley because as I said in 10% of cases you won't see it anyways and it's such a tiny structure it's really hard to visualize so you better use the, the long head of the biceps tendon as an indirect marker of a pulley lesion if it's subluxated medially or even dislocated and in that case the pulley has to be torn and you can mention that in the report. I will do a separate video about actual pulley lesions on MRI, so make sure you subscribe to my channel and also hit the notification button because then you get an email every time I upload a new video. Also hit the like button, that would be really nice and see you next week.